Welcome to The New Chemist. We're glad you're listening. Feel free to download this podcast on Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and other platforms. On The New Chemist, we discuss chemistry, which simply put is a science of change, as well as careers, community research, and COVID-19. We're happy you're tuning in. Our guest today is Omar Sharfali, a colleague of mine from Georgia Tech. Thanks for joining me today. It is so good to hear from you. Just briefly, I'll inform my audience about you. Omar Sharfali has both bachelor's and master's degrees from Georgia Tech in the field of computer science. He graduated with a bachelor's degree in computer science with highest honors and a master's degree specifically in machine learning. He has served as a graduate research assistant and an undergraduate artificial intelligence researcher. He is also multilingual, speaking English, Gujarati, Hindi, and Urdu. An accomplished and up-and-coming computer scientist, he is on a good path to making a positive difference in the world. Please welcome Omar Shafi. Well, Omar, thanks for joining me today. It's good to have you on. Hey, thanks for having me, David. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow. So how have you been, Omar? How have things been since the last time I saw you and you were colleagues and you lived right down the hall from me in, was it, what was it, Montag Hall? Yeah, that was freshman year of college, man. It's been yeah. a long time. Yeah, it's been, uh, it's I been mean, years. Yeah, things things have definitely changed, man. So, well, we were living on the pre-health floor at that time, right? Yes, we were. So, I remember when I was a freshman, my what I wanted to do was computer science with pre-health. That's why I was living on the pre-health floor with you guys. I was the only computer science major, if you remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, after finishing school and during school, I didn't really think there was like a good good combination of the two, like computer science and health medicine type fields. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, with my new job that I just started, like – I'm happy I finally found that mix because like yeah. it took me a while, right? Like, so it's been seven years since freshman year. I didn't find any type of role like that, honestly. So, mm-hmm. um, you know, I just started this January. So mm-hmm. six years from freshman year, when I first had that original in, uh, vision in my head, it, it finally uh, actualized, manifested. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. Certain flames don't burn, don't die easily. So getting started, uh, what have been your long-standing interest in the field of computer science? It seems like you hinted at them through the period. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I mean, oh, like ever since I was a kid, like I've always just been fascinated with like computers. Uh, just like there's just so much you can do on a computer, um, whether it's like, you know, playing video games, writing software, just browsing the internet. Like it's just like a whole wealth of information, right? So. Mm-hmm. I think for me, like, I just got interested at a young age. Like, I used to, like, you know how it is now today where you see, like, kids always on their phone. Well, like, I guess I was, like, one of those first types of kids. But it was, like, you know, technology obviously wasn't that at the, to the extent it is at now when mm-hmm. I was here. But I definitely had some influence, right? Like, I had a laptop as, like, an early teenager. Mm-hmm. You know, so I used to play a lot of video games on it. Like, I even got into, like, uh, writing, like, scripts for video games and all that so i got into the i got into like that whole like concept early and i didn't even know what i was doing at that time like i when i was at that age it was just like i was i was just messing around basically like just having fun right and then you know as i got older uh i was come coming around for like high end of high school college time and like i i didn't really know computer science was a field but like as i was introduced to it um, I was like, oh, okay, like this is basically like what I've always been interested in, like mm-hmm. as a field, right? So, um, after getting introduced to that concept, like I was able to like kind of channel my energy towards it. And I think like a, a lot of people that I've talked to, like who've started computer science late in their lives, it's been like, oh, like I'm I'm late to it because I just didn't really know about it. So mm-hmm. I think there's like a huge advantage for people to like learn it early. Or like be exposed to it earlier it's just so it's like in their mind that this is like a career path and all that so yeah you bring up a very interesting concept and something that i i i value highly the concept or the principle of exposure you know i don't think you know i honestly think that sometimes exposure could carry as much weight as expiration and what i mean by that is sure. exposing someone to like 
say for example, our, our chemistry is my field. So exposing someone to like kinetics, fundamental kinetic principles or rate yep. laws or whatever the case may be, exposing yep. them to that early so that they get to see where their interest lies. I think yep. that could be uh, as beneficial as them sitting down and studying as well. Depending yeah. on who's the, depending on who is the person um, exposing them to the material and how well they're versed in it. So, how do you maintain view of the bigger picture in your career and in your life in general? I mean, I think for me, it really just starts as like you got to understand what you want out of your career and your profession and all that. And mm -hmm. like, so for me, like I was saying, like I was always interested in medicine, but like, why was I interested in medicine? Well, I think like my interest really came with like, I wanted to help people or like make a positive impact on the world. Right. Mm -hmm. so, like mm -hmm. if you're working on software, that's like, you know, whatever, like related to anything, there's a lot of times where you're working on software that might not be relevant to the world, like making a positive impact in the world, like mm -hmm. making a difference in people's lives essentially. Right. So there's some fields where you could like apply computer science to. So I think for me, like, my big picture was that like, okay, well, what do I want to do with my life and career? Mm -hmm. And like, that's like make a positive impact in the world and like have like, you know, my stamp on like whatever my career does. Right. So I think that's like my biggest motivator. Like even today, like I still think about that, like what can I do in terms of my career to like get there? Like ideally after I finish my career, I want to, I want to be like, I felt like I want to feel like I, I made a positive impact, you know, through my work and all of that. So mm -hmm. I think keeping that as your big picture and like what you really want, some people's big pictures are different, right? Like some people just want to make money. Some people just, you know, want status. Some people like have a drive to make a positive impact in the world. Right. So like mm -hmm. understanding that first and foremost is really like crucial to understanding the big picture. And for me, it was like, I, I, I wanted to make a positive impact. So you know, I always try to tailor like all my decisions and career paths down that ultimate goal. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, man. And it's interesting that you said you from in the previous question, you mentioned how you exposed you you exposed to like fundamental computer science principles to video yeah. games. I've heard yeah. similar sentiments from um Doctor uh, one of the professors at Georgia Tech, and he talked about the Atari. I'm not sure if you know the games console. Yeah, the oh. Atari game console and um how he was yep. introduced that by one of his relatives and he ran around the same uh, path in which he was making modifications to the game. So fundamental computer science principles. So yeah, yeah. how have you been adaptive and creative in the field of science, in your field of computer science to be exact? Yeah. Where do you think you are carving out a niche or complement into some authentic yeah. footprint that you leave? Yeah, for sure. I mean, so computer science itself is a, uh a broad field yeah. in general like computer science really like people when people ask me like oh like i want to do this like i want to do that with with computer science i'm like dude like if you want you can do whatever you want with computer science right like you can say like i want to do computer science and i want to work on like some specialty robotics i want to do this i want to do that right um for me it's i like i've been trying to distinguish myself in the sense that like i did my master's also at gt um as you mm -hmm. know Yep. Uh, and I specialize in artificial intelligence and machine learning and mm. machine learning is a subfield of artificial intelligence. Right. So like already through there, like I've started to specialize and create my niche. Mm -hmm. And for me, it, the reason why I decided to go down like something like that was again, like what can I learn to distinguish myself from others, but also like make a positive impact in the world. Right. So like you see like so many use cases of AI in any field but specifically like uh for me like at my current job i work at a precision medicine company and that means that the company basically is built on top of like ai and uses all our data to make like smart decisions about like healthcare and medicine and treating people improving people's qualities of life um so i think like for me i've been trying to distinguish myself as okay like yes i know computer science but more even more specifically like I, I, I know AI concepts as well, and I know how to apply them. Right. Um, so like you can really go into whatever field, but even more specifically, like I want to take that one step further where it's like, okay, not only do I have a, a specialty in AI, like I want to be to a one point where one day I'm like, okay, I have a specialty in AI 
specifically related to medicine and like carve that out as my niche. Right. Um, so like later in my career, I can get to a point where it's like, okay, you know, instead of being more of the person who's like actually on the ground, essentially like doing the hard work and all that, like more as somebody with like a vision and like guiding, guiding projects and things like that with the vision. Right. So I think like, that's kind of where I see my career going down or how I want my career to go moving so, forward. So, so do you see that in this thing more on requiring more training, like a PhD? I thought about it. Honestly, I was actually like this close to doing my PhD. Um, and I think for me, it was the biggest thing that I had with, uh, against doing my PhD was the speed at which academia moves is a bit slower than industry. Like hmm. we, that's that's a I think that's a pretty well known like I, fact as well. Like you've seen, Anantabaki. yeah, you've seen people like like Elon Musk even come out and say that, um, and other like people who that's just by putting the pressure on industry. I think actually I was watching an interview of Sundar Sundar Pichai, the CEO of uh, Google. He was saying the same thing. He was saying how uh, Google's mission is to kind of like uh, set the precedent for new technologies because they're the fastest, they're able to take it to market faster than like academia and all of that, right? Because mm -hmm. being a big company, they can hire, they can hire like people with PhDs and all that and even partner with research, but they're the ones actually putting it in people's hands, right? Mm -hmm. um, so I think for me, that was like one of the bigger reasons too, where it's like, okay, well, I want to make an impact faster, sooner, you know? Yeah. yeah. Um, but it's hard. It's hard. I mean, you have to grow your career first before you can kind of like start thinking about those types of ideas right so oh. you know i've only i've only been working for about three years now so um which is like good i'm getting a lot of exposure to even the field as a whole but it mm -hmm. takes a while for you to get to that point where it's like okay like you're actually making moves right so yeah yeah i think that was a big decision yeah so it's interesting that you you said that um because you know in terms of industry many of Many academic labs are funded by uh, different companies. So yeah, yeah. That's, that's very true. Like Novartis and um, Pfizer, or whatever the case may be. Yeah, they they are funded by uh, those pharmaceutical companies are funded by uh, those large industries. Yeah, it yeah. makes sense. It makes a lot of sense. So um, you studied at Georgia Tech. Um, you worked with different companies. How have you sort of found the right environment for you to thrive scientifically and intellectually? Yeah. Would you say I you think, found that environment, Omar? Yeah, I mean, so for me, like my first job coming out of college, like I was doing, uh, I was doing artificial intelligence work at Capital One, a finance company, right? And so initially, like I was, I was happy with the work that I was doing, but for me, like, like going back to what I was saying earlier, my, I have a deeper motivation, right? So um, I think when I switched companies, um, now working at Tempest, uh, precision medicine company, it is technically still a startup, right? So mm -hmm. that fast paced environment where you're working on new things and going fast, I feel like has been a better environment for me so far. I've only been here for about six months, but um, I, I'm really liking that because like it's fast paced and I feel like every day I'm doing something, it's like taking us one step closer toward like my ultimate like goal, right? Which is like improving people's lives and, you know, making a positive impact. Mm -hmm. So I think it's, some people are, it depends, right? Like some people wouldn't want to work at a startup. Some people would pr probably prefer like a lax work environment and all that. And um, oftentimes like startups are on the, are on the edge of like new technologies and like fast-paced environments and like typically even applying like the newest science too right so mm -hmm. um like then that's kind of how they become successful right like somebody comes up with uh somebody discovers something they want to apply it and they make a startup and boom 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 you're starting to go right mm -hmm. um so i think i think so far i'm definitely enjoying a fast-paced environment um yeah. and I, I i really like that like i feel like i'm making uh contributions on a daily basis okay that's good so um several things i want to ask about that my question is how do you manage working in a fast-paced environment that's a very practical question because yeah. a number of people in For sure. graduate programs the, yeah. the, when you adjust from undergrad to graduate school um the pace of pickup i think that's so far yeah. 
for most people. Uh, the pace sure. pick up the amount of tasks that they're required to manage it increases. Yeah. So, um, how are you managing that? Especially I think COVID. Yeah. I think first and foremost, you have to kind of like understand what you're getting yourself into, right? Like, yeah. if you realize you have to first understand like, oh, are you capable or is this even forget capable? Is this even something that you want? Right. Mm-hmm. Um, so I was actually uh, at my last job, I was desiring something faster. Right. So I was like, okay, I want to, I want something faster. So I think for me, I came in with the expectation knowing that like, hey, I might have to work more hours than I was working at my last job. Um, so you have to like really manage your expectations in that sense. But I think sometimes you do get, it, it is tough, right? Like some days you're like working like late into the evening and, mm-hmm. and then you're, you're like, man, like, this is like, this is so tough. Like I'm mentally drained and all that. So yeah, I've, realizing, been there. I've been there. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, realizing that like, it's really common academia too, right? Like I, I did my master's. I, I saw the same thing happening for a lot of people. Um, but I just kind of understand, like, you have to know that that's something that you're willing to take on if you put yourself in that position too. Right. So I think for me, like I was ready for it. I wanted it. And like, so I'm like, it doesn't bother me as much in the sense that like, if I, if I wasn't expecting like a fast paced environment where I would have to work a little bit extra, then I'd probably be like, Oh man, I'm so stressed out. Like I can't handle this, all that. Right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like mentally ready for it as well. Yeah. Learn to prepare yourself for what you have to go through. And all of those things are hemmed within the narrative of the academic journey, the highs and the lows. For sure, yeah. Yeah, they're hemmed in. It's almost like a garment. For Um, sure. Yeah, but um, at the same time, um, how do you maintain balance? I think we are progressing well. How do you maintain balance in your life, given your responsibilities and your accomplishments? I would say you're a very progressive young person, a colleague, and I would say a friend of mine. Yeah. You're multilingual, you've done, you've achieved, you've earned your stripes. Mm-hmm. You speak the Jirati, Hindu, Urdu, you, you've earned your stripes. So how do you maintain balance? Yeah, I mean, I think, like, this is probably just, like, for related to what anyone, like, you got to, you have to figure out, like, you can't, you have to have balance in your life just in every regards, too, not just, like, work and, and school and all Sorry. of that, too, right? Like, uh, like I'm a big, big person, big proponent of like keeping balance in multifacets of your life, where it's like, okay. for me personally, it's like, I like to keep a balance with, uh, sports and fitness, uh, work, family, uh, religion. So I think like finding like different, different things that you realize that you're kind of maybe, uh, leaning skewed one way, let's say like you're skewed towards like, uh, maybe working too much. Like you need to find those different categories where you can kind of like draw some of that attention to other things and kind of uh, mm-hmm. like full balance, essentially like harmony um, across these different like aspects of your life. Cause I think it's really important to like, at the end of the day, uh, work is work, right? Like you're working, you might, you might have a deeper mission. Um, but at the end of the day, like there's, at least to me, I, there's more important things than, than like, that mission where it's like your family is really important you know your mm-hmm. mental health is really important oh yeah your your even your your physical health is really important too so Indeed. if you start to let one of those drift it actually affects everything else right so mm-hmm. if you spend too much time on work and you let your physical and mental health drift then your phys- your your work is actually going to start getting impacted as well right so mm-hmm. it's actually been i feel like it's actually beneficial for you to like not skew not overweigh on one different part of your life more than the others i mean but i mean that's the constant challenge of life right like yeah we struggle we all struggle with keeping balance with different things yeah um, we all have a, as, one more time? As, especially as you know like going to georgia tech it's tough man so we right. know we, we know about that we we have that uh that bond uh, we, we're georgia tech grads so we know that how hard and difficult that was so yeah, for me, it was a little different. I, yeah, I, I would say I didn't graduate from Georgia Tech. That's right, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But even so, just going there, getting that exposure, like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah so it's definitely being there, I would say being there, networking there, um, of course, it exposes you to a different way to approach problems. And I think that's one of the things that, uh, that's an indelible impression in my mind. 
Um, mm-hmm. you know, in terms of academia and all those other things. But yeah, dude, I you know I've never heard it discussed that way before. Um, having balance, like compartmentalizing your life and having balance in each one of those compartments. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's interesting. That's definitely an interesting perspective because you know, I've heard, uh, I've heard different discussions of balance and that balance is dynamic and mm-hmm. that balance is not just this static sense of perfection but mm-hmm. the dynamic in that you adjust to all of the different things that are requiring your attention for sure requiring um your uh, just requiring you to address them so yeah, yeah. so that's an interesting perspective very interesting i i'm probably going to talk that somewhere and look into <laughs> that afterwards so yeah. yeah um omar my question to you now is um what would you attribute to your success what, uh, what has been complimentary to you being successful? Yeah, I mean, and hey. Outgoing personality, was it? Yeah, I mean, well, first in my head, like I haven't reached success in my head. Okay, uh, that, that's very good. And that's an honest and, assessment of yourself. Yeah, I, and I think that's one of the things that drives and motivates me, right? Like mm-hmm. I'm not content with with where I'm at, right? So, mm-hmm. and many people, many people like are content, like they come out of, college they find a job they're working like cool like they're happy with that right for me like i said like i i set high standards and and high life goals for myself right so mm-hmm. my definition of success is not short-term success is long-term success and you know like that doesn't just extend to like work life it extends to personal life too right like you you success in my definition is like success in in work, success in, in your personal life and like not only enabling yourself for a good future, enabling your family for a good future and all of that too, right? So, mm-hmm. um, and then, yeah, I, I think I think constantly like working on yourself and all of that like is, is something that I try to do. So like I said, I, I don't feel like I've reached success, but mm-hmm. things that I, that I, I, I have done is like, just try to be proactive and mm-hmm. uh, like try to be pr- easygoing in, in the work environment. And also mm-hmm. like one thing that's really helped me and it's like kind of specific to my job is like communication, mm-hmm. uh, the better communicator you are, like it'll just set you up for success in any environment. I feel like, mm-hmm. um, so like specifically in, in working in software um, and AI and stuff like that, like communicating, uh making sure you're like really sharing everything you learn and all of that is like it's something that i i i've been trying to make an effort to get better at and i feel like uh by me getting better at it it helps me like achieve more and at my job too right so mm-hmm. I, I i think that's definitely something that like i've been trying to actively work on um mm-hmm. and it's definitely been helping too so yeah dude, i completely agree and you know i you may uh, this is my personal opinion. You may feel as if you haven't reached success as a noun, but I think the adjective successful can be used to describe you. So, um, and I agree with the I agree with the fact that you said success in the long term is more like setting others up and setting yourself up for prosperity and doing well in the future, and also having impact over time, not just in one instance or like over like two or three years. So yeah, yeah. I agree with you. I agree with you. So how do you maintain vision and teamwork in your environment? How are you maintaining that, especially during COVID? Yeah, I mean... COVID could be isolating sometimes. I think everyone has realized it. Yeah, I mean, like, going back to the point of teamwork and, and COVID, like, I think that was something that a lot of people were hit on. Uh, it's it's hard to have that same, like, teamwork when you're completely virtual, right? Like, mm-hmm. so I remember, like... You can't high-five your friends. You can't, yeah, none of that. You know, you can't. I mean, your, you can't do it. That's so critical. <laughs> you can't roll your chair over and be like, "Hey, like, what's this? Like, can you explain yeah. this to me?" Right? Where it's yeah. like, now you have to formulate your ideas into words, and like, make sure those words are actually like clear. Mm-hmm. Um, so, like, I mean, I guess it kind of relates back to what I was saying earlier. Like, your communication becomes even more important during times like this, right? Um, for teamwork and uh like yeah i definitely think that that covid's been tough but people are adjusting uh like mm-hmm. for example like 
a lot of tech companies are now like allowing people to fully work fully remote. Um, and I think people are really liking working fully remote also goes back to the idea of balance that we were kind of talking about too, right? People are becoming, uh, having more balanced lives in the sense that like they don't work every hour from nine to five, like they'll work, they'll maybe take an hour, go for a run and then work an extra hour later, or like, you know, take their, pick their kids up from school and then make up those time like later in the evening or something like that. Right. Mm. Um, so I think, I think, yeah, definitely like, uh, that balance has, has changed with, uh, working from home and COVID and all that, but Mm. some people really enjoy that. I mean, I'm still young. Like I still want to go into the office and like, just like, you know, kind of gr- getting that grind vibe and all that. Like, I don't really have too much responsibilities and family and all that. So, mm-hmm. um, but yeah. That's fair. That's fair. So as we conclude, um, why did you choose computer science as a field to major in? And what advice do you have for those wanting to pursue the field you're currently working in? Yeah, yeah. So like, yeah, computer science, I think I really just chose it because I feel like it's not a, a a specific field such that like, okay, you go into medicine, you're doing, you're working on medicine for the rest of your life, right? Like for the most part, right? Like that's kind of like how a lot of these different uh, fields are. Like you go into finance, you mostly stay in finance, right? If you go into computer science, you really just learn, uh, you just really learn a way of solving and doing things, right? Like mm-hmm. you're, you can do whatever you want with a computer science degree. You could go into finance, you could go into medicine, you could go into video games, like you were Mm -hmm. saying, go into like anything. Right. So I think for me, it was like, okay, well, I have a huge interest in computers already. Um, but I don't really know exactly what I want to go into, like what industry, I guess, like finance, medicine and all that. Um, I initially, like I said, I wanted to go into medicine, but when I was early on in college, like I didn't really think that was going to work out. Um, because like, it just wasn't like what six years ago now, like time flies, like the whole landscape of, of tech was vastly different, even six years ago. Mm -hmm. Uh, So I think, I think understanding that, like, I chose computer, I chose computer science because like, I really understood that like, oh yeah, I could, I could go a lot of different directions with this. Right. And it's something that I, that, that interested me. Um, so that's kind of why I chose it. And then what was the second part of the question that you were saying? Uh, Oh, my second part was, uh, uh, what advice do you have for those wanting to pursue the field you're currently working in? Yeah, I mean, so I think for people who want to go into computer science is like, try it out, like first and foremost, like see if, uh, see how you like it and all that. There's so many like tutorials, like different mm-hmm. ways of doing uh, like intros to computer science. Like, for example, I volunteered for an organization called uh, uh, Girls Who Code, right? And basically like the whole point of the organization is to like uh, increase exposure to like uh, young girls to computer science um, just so they can like even get the idea in their head. Okay, this is what computer science is. Maybe I want to go into it, right? Mm -hmm. So like exposing yourself just to the concept first and foremost is like obviously the best way, kind of like what we were saying earlier, Mm -hmm. like you need to really like understand what it is. Um, And like if some people's, some people's like, uh, some people don't think in the way that would make sense for going to computer science. Like I've met, I've met some of my cousins who were like, tried going to computer science and they're like, yeah, I just feel like my brain just doesn't like, uh, like, like formulate like thoughts and stuff like that, like putting it into code and all that. But a lot of people can like really easily pick it up. So mm-hmm. I think trying it out and there's like a number of different ways to try it out. Like you could, if you're interested in sports, there's something you could do for sports, like just for fun, right? Like you could download some sports data and like try to manipulate that data and like whatever, right? Like you can get exposure that way, or Mm -hmm. you can follow a tutorial on how to make a game. Like you can making a game is like their software that you could use to easily make it. Like, for example, I know, I know like, yeah, you can do Jupyter notebooks. I know a 13 year old who made a game Wow. because he just got curious. Like he wanted to make a game. He like, found out how to do it he found a tutorial and he made a game right and now he wants to go into computer science right yeah swirl uh, huh swirl for r swirl yeah for, yeah, yeah there's so, there's so many different things like uh, a lot of people are getting exposed to it in in uh grad school for a variety of different things because mm-hmm. 
you need it for a lot of different fields as well, right? So yeah. it gives you more uh, pro prowess. Yeah, more exactly. Prowess. So I think it's more of like it's it's a tool that anyone could really use in in any field. Like mm -hmm. whether even forget like okay maybe you don't want to like go specialize in it you you don't want that to be your ma major but you could still benefit from having that knowledge like in fact like i know a number of people a number of my friends who are at engineers and they're like oh yeah like when i was interviewing they they asked me if i knew like how to code or anything like that right so mm -hmm. um just like try it out at the worst like you can say that okay yeah i kind of know how to code like i i went through a tutorial something like that so I think that's my advice. And then there's also a lot of subfields for computer science. Like what I was mentioning earlier, if you're interested in sports, like you could do some uh, data science, you could do data analytics. Like that's not like, that's not, that's a specific field of computer science. That's honestly today, it's pretty easy to get into. Like you have a programming language called Python, super easy mm -hmm. to use. Very and powerful. It, very powerful. Like I use it every day at my work. That's our main programming language. And like, that's also the main programming language that a lot of people first learn. Right. So mm -hmm. like, I think uh, that could give confidence to people hearing like, okay, like a professional like me uses Python every day at their job. And it's also the easiest one to learn. Right. Um, so I, I, I think that today and tomorrow and next week, it's only going to get easier and easier to learn how to code and like get exposed to it so mm -hmm. yeah. yeah i agree i agree so what is the most beneficial advice you have received as we conclude what is the most beneficial advice you have received if you had to like sum it down to like two or three statements yeah oh that's a tough one man yeah yeah Oof. i'm sure you're up to it yeah huh best advice that i've ever received mm -hmm. I think. Oh, what resonates with you more? What what replays in your mind? When you go yeah. through challenging time. Yeah, I'm thinking fun. about a few things. Yeah, I'm thinking about a few things, but I think for me, some of the best advice that I've received, and like, it's I don't want to be repetitive, but it's like figuring out your long term vision. Like, I I think like early on, like like what I was saying earlier, I. I realized that I wanted to like make my, my long-term vision be like, okay, I want to have a positive impact on the world. Right. Mm -hmm. I think really figuring that out. A lot of people don't know that. Like, like I have so many cousins who are like just trying to get into college or like just in that phase. And I'll be like, okay, so what do you, uh, what do you want to like, what do you plan on like majoring in or all that? And a lot of them are like, yeah, I don't know. And then I I'll be like, okay, well uh, like, what do you want to do? Like, what's your, like, what do you want to do with your career? Like, what's your final outcome? So like always having the, the big picture, like in your head is like super beneficial for, for you. Like some people's big picture might just be like, Hey, I want to save up a lot of money and retire. Like, mm -hmm. okay, that's your big picture. Well, like really figure out if that's what you want. Right. Mm -hmm. So I think really figuring out uh, what you want from your like career and even more deeper than that, like your life. Mm -hmm. I think that's definitely some of the best advice that I've gotten because everyone goes through that struggle, like identity. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. like I remember even at some point in college, I was like, wait, like, should I be doing computer science? Like maybe it's not for me. Like, and I feel like almost everyone has in college specifically has been like, whoa, like, okay. I mean, there's obviously some people who don't, but like a lot of people will go through that thought in their head. Mm -hmm. uh, even and in grad school, dude. Even grad yeah, school. even in grad school. Some people will do PhD for like five years and be like, wait, this is not it. Like, and like five years of PhD down the drain. Um, <laughs> and actually, one of my coworkers, uh, he's an MD. Mm -hmm. like he finished medical school. Like he did some training after and then he completely transitioned into software. Like, wow. so and he's literally an MD. Like he's my coworker and he's he's a software engineer. Like he he works in software, right? So um i think i think like really kind of figuring out like what type of impact you want to have and like or what you just want out of your life and career is like keeping that big picture always in your head and remembering that like setting yourself achievable goals is definitely um the best advice yeah yeah, yeah. so it's good to be pragmatic 
it's good to yeah. think about the big picture and it's good to break it down into granularity and particulars. And what yeah. I mean, what I mean by that is like day to day steps. How can yeah. I achieve this big goal? For sure. And then, of course, it's important to do your homework. You know, as good as it may be to eat eggs every single day, if you have the capacity to make a cake mm-hmm. and you go to the grocery store and all you get is eggs and you have the capacity to get more ingredients, I think mm-hmm. it's up to you. You have to make the decision on yourself, you know, get mm-hmm. the ingredients, go through the process and achieve mm-hmm. the end result. So, mm-hmm. yeah, of course, there is a degree of serendipity or favor or blessing or whatever you want, may want to describe it yeah. as that goes into the journey. But at the end of the day, work is very important. And, you know, yes, we all have our different struggles. And yes, we all have our different challenges that are woven into the narrative of our lives. But sure. I think, you know, depending on how we approach them and with a good degree of optimism and positivity, I think we could progress through them, hopefully. Uh, at, sure. least that, at least that works out in most cases. So, yeah. or, or we could learn something from it. That, I think that's more feasible. Yeah. And I think even like you saying that, like another piece of really good advice that I've gotten, like even related to that is like, don't get hung up on like uh, setbacks or like sometimes if you didn't get what you want, like mm-hmm. who knows what's in store for you, man. There's only, only one person who knows what's in store for you. And I mean, it depends on what you believe in all that, but Hey, I personally believe that like everyone has something in store for them. Yeah. Um, and like I mean, sometimes, people will get hung up on like the right now like oh this didn't go out go the way that i wanted to mm-hmm. like even relating it back to myself like i didn't think i'd ever like make the transition back to like my original like desire in terms of like computer science and medicine right and like when i first experienced when i first experienced that like oh like i i went to fresh freshman year career fair and i talked to a number of different companies like who are like kind of related to like medicine Mm. Um, and I was like, Hey, like, do you guys have openings for computer science majors? And all, every single one of them said, no, oh, every wow. one of them, I went to, I went to the pre pre health, uh, career fair mm-hmm. and every single one of them said no. And like, I searched for jobs and all that. And I just really didn't find any. And I was like, man, like, maybe this isn't it for me. Like, maybe this is just like, like not, not it. Like maybe I should like change, change gears and all that. Right. Mm. But you know, like six years later, here I am not right now, like something came, an opportunity came for me and like, I'm back doing what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. Um, And so I think like always remembering that, like, you know, there's, everyone has like a destiny and like, there's, there's something you have ups and downs in your lives, but like Mm -hmm. everything's supposed to happen for a reason too. Like, so. Yeah, I do. I I agree with that. And uh, that comes from my faith background, but I agree that every, everyone's there for a reason. Everyone has intrinsic value. And they can complement the narrative of their own life and other people's lives as well. Mm-hmm. So yeah, man. But yeah, this is this is a really good discussion and it's really good to hear from you, Omar. Thank you very much. Thanks for listening. We're glad you were able to tune into this podcast. Once again, this is the new chemist where we discuss chemistry, which simply put is the science of change, as well as the other sciences careers, community, research, and COVID-19. Thanks again for listening. Note, the views on this podcast represent those of my guests and I.